The aim of this presentation is to learn more about the supportive business environment, which will be illustrated by real cases. We will go through the seven sub-arenas, which form the business environment and share the main supportive aspects for each sub-arena. Cases studied in the Rubismo project will show how this support can work in practice. Every business is unique, and this is why the guidelines presented should be viewed as general. Let's start with funding. It is important for entrepreneurs to have access to a level of funding appropriate to their stage of development. Financial support can range from testing your business idea to supporting your internationalization. Access to funding should be easy, and sometimes some guidance may help, help entrepreneurs find their way to the right funding solution. It is also important to have a transparent and simple application process, as neither administration nor bureaucracy necessarily come easily to the typical entrepreneur. Encouraging and facilitating partnership with other organizations can help make access to funding easier. It is crucial to have a long-term funding strategy to help the entrepreneurs to have a clear vision of the funding sub arena for the coming years. A good example studied in the Rubismo project is the biogas <coughs> Brolanda case. Several farmers decided to add value to their manure and other side streams by processing it in a biogas plant. Different types of financial support helped them to develop from a project idea to a full-scale biogas production. The access to the different subsidies and bank loans was facilitated by collaborating with regional actors. In a supportive technology and knowledge subarena, key regional stakeholders like universities, research, research institutes, or innovation parks, which are relevant for your context, are active in your region and willing to collaborate with each other and with new actors. When these stakeholders are missing, it is important to collaborate with other regions to get access to this support. This solution might not be optimal for the entrepreneur, but no region is self-contained or can be specialized in everything. Finally, supporting collaboration in research and development projects can facilitate the development of technology and knowledge and hence strengthen the business environment. The example from Bohus C Culture AB illustrates well the positive impact research and innovation centers can have on smaller businesses. Thanks to a tight collaboration with Christine Bell Marine Center, Bohus C Culture developed an efficient seaweed production and developed different food products, which would have taken many years more if they would have worked on their own. This sub-arena sub includes general societal and economic challenges, which can be extremely important for rural businesses. Due to low density population and resulting limitations in services and infrastructure in rural areas, businesses need to overcome this challenge by sharing resources and infrastructure. Therefore, a supportive business environment should encourage and facilitate this collaboration. Access to reliable telecommunication is essential for most businesses. Access to public transportation can also be a major hinder for rural businesses as it can make it impossible for some employees or customers to engage with their business. Finally, raw material and workforce should be easily accessible. The Blue Lobster Marketplace developed a digital platform putting the fishermen directly in contact with the customer avoiding the middleman and extra cost related to it and hence increase the fishermen's revenues. This solution could be developed as the internet network is reli reliable even in the open sea, making it possible for the fishermen to sell their product while navigating back from the fishing spot. To sell their products or services, a supportive market structure will facilitate the entrepreneur's development. For new entrepreneurs to succeed, it is important that existing business actors are willing to collaborate with new actors, for example, by acknowledging that new actors could bring complementary products or services, thereby strengthening each other's offering. The existence of already established marketplaces, either physical or digital, 
would also help new rural entrepreneurs to reach their customer quicker. The Kiel Vegagan farm in Ireland started to process their own production of oat to develop organic oat-based food products. They benefited from existing greengrocers and artisan food shops to sell their products to the right segment of customer. In a business environment that supports training and education effectively, training actors, not only training providers, collaborate to optimize training outcomes. Ideally, comprehensive support offers all type of training needed to run a business successfully, both theory and practical training. People learn in a different ways and adults learn very differently from children. Adding a coaching component is necessary to individualize the training. For the trainee to own the learning, reflective practices are needed. The possibility for training and education is dramatically improved in recent years and developing all the time, and it should not be forgotten. The consumer should not be overlooked here, and right to information and consumer education are part of an effective marketing mix. Glen King Farm in Ireland selling now different type of experiences on the side of their sheep farm. The owner joined a free empower program funded by national and regional funds, which give her access to experts in every field of business, high value mentoring sessions, and a network of like-minded entrepreneurs. This program was key to the successful farm, farm diversification. The consumers or users are de facto crucial for a business to thrive. First of all, consumers need to share your values and your products or services need to fulfill their needs. Lobbying actors such as NGOs or cooperatives present in the region lead campaigns to create consumer awareness on sustainability issues. The presence of existing consumer groups relevant to your context is a clear advantage in reaching out effectively to potential consumers. Tainavi experienced a supportive business environment which facilitated the production and sale of honey, locally made pottery and ecotourism. The local community collaborates and creates added value for the consumers. Maintaining an active dialogue between policymakers and all relevant stakeholders is essential to ensure a supportive business environment. All rules and regulations should be easy to access and interpret, and they must consider emerging and pioneer sectors. This sub arena is probably the one entrepreneurs struggle the most with. Here we have many examples, for example, the lack of certification of uh, land-based aquaculture in Sweden, lack of authorization for insect-based food in Germany or issue with categorization of taxes in Romania. Rules and regulations often are seen as a hindering factor. In order to succeed in the development of a supportive business environment, it is relevant to create cooperation with key stakeholders such as public agencies at different levels, research and academic institutes, network clusters, innovation hubs, and so on. These key stakeholders need to be engage in the discussion and development of plausible, well-defined and well-aligned strategies. It is important to have a clear and appropriate governance structure to enable decision-making and share responsibilities to the respective stakeholders. In addition, sufficient resources such as human, time, financial knowledge and expertise need to be assigned by the relevant stakeholders for negotiation process. Finally, these processes enable for a continuous development and consolidation of learning and innovation capacity. The guidelines presented are not rocket science. However, looking at over 100 business cases studied within Rubismo, the fully supportive business environments are indeed rare. Therefore, to move forward, you could start to reflect on the following questions. What are the main obstacles to implementing these guidelines? What stakeholder is missing to reach a well-functioning and resilient business environment? What is the current governance or collaboration structure between the key stakeholders? And finally, what is the role of entrepreneurs in shaping their business environment? We have seen many examples of businesses actively working to improve their business environment in order to be successful. 
and who have turned these obstacles into opportunities. So you want to make sure you keep up with them. Thank you for your attention and good luck shaping your business environment.